Frida Pinto, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Spilling Chai. Huge honor to have you. I, thank um, you so much, Anisha. You're so welcome. So, so many people know, obviously know about your work in films, but not as many people know about your work with Anya. And that's really what I want to talk about today, because I think it's so important. And I love how you're going about this issue. So tell us about Anya. What is it? And what are you doing for it? What kind of work are you guys doing? Absolutely. Anya was founded out of uh, by two women named Jane and Ariana. And uh, I came to it as a chief impact officer, really from the need to wanting to normalize so much about postpartum that isn't normalized in this country. Um, I come from India, Anusha, as you already know that. And so my um, the stories that I have that have been shared with me about my mother's postpartum journey and some of um, the women in my family, like my cousin, who have uh, ex- seen her ex- go through and experience postpartum while I was a teenager, Uh, What I saw is so different from the experiences that a lot of my American girlfriends shared with me um, that I almost found it a little jarring and a little strange that something as important and as personal and um, almost like transformative, you know, it's just like it's instantly it instantly changes your world uh, when you're pregnant for sure. But once you've had the baby, it's like a whole new different game. And I just always wondered how in a progressive country like America, or what we think is a very progressive country uh, in the developed world and whatever you want to call it, how is it so badly misunderstood, misrepresented, and completely actually even forgotten about? You know, how is it just reduced to six weeks of paid leave? And how does it, how does your OB only give you one checkup um, after that is at the six week mark. And then the next one is at the one year mark, the 12 month mark, which is ridiculous to me. Um, so of course, like from, it, it came from a point of like wanting to a personal place, which is wanting to make my own postpartum journey very, very special and, uh, almost wanting to emulate and replicate certain things that my mother, uh, um, enjoyed from her culture. But here I was having my baby in Austin, Texas, and knowing that I would have to create and really work hard, uh, while I was pregnant to create that postpartum sanctuary. So instead of spending time and money on just building the nursery and getting the crib and the crib sheets and thousand and one newborn clothes that your baby will never wear because they're just walking, running or walking <laughs> because they're just in your arms. They're not even walking <laughs> because they're just in your arms in, in diapers and nappies or whatever, you know, you choose. Um, and so I really spent my time on creating my postpartum sanctuary and marking out what the first, not six weeks, not 40 days, but what the first three months would look like. And um, and actually, while I was on that journey in a very organic way, and I do believe so much in putting the energy that you put out is the energy that you receive. Uh, and I feel like because I was so um, focused and almost earnestly putting out this energy for myself that it attracted um, through a friend who knew what I was working on for myself, uh, a friend connected me to Jane and Ari Um, while they had conceptualized and just about ready to take Anya out into the world. Um, I came on board six months before its launch date. And um, they invited me to be the chief impact officer. And I became part of uh, the Anya family. And um, Anya is pretty much just that, you know, for me, it was my platform to take my own experience and share my own experience with the world. Because, you know, we learn so much from other people's stories. I learned so much from yours, from the uh, up at uh, from the the write up that you had, I believe it was the medium, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was no, Vogue. It was, it, Vogue. You read about me first, yeah, in Vogue. I remember you saying yeah, Vogue. That. Yeah, yes, thank Vogue. you. Yeah, <laughs> um, and that's. I'm sorry, this lawnmower just got super loud, isn't it? No? <laughs> I can't hear it. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, maybe it's just um, but, but yeah, I, I think that's how we learn. I learned from your experience and what you went through, and how almost unsupported you were in your in your journey at the hospital the place where you expect support and the place that you should be given the right amount of support and then I only wondered how many women go through this how many new mamas go through this how many second time third time fourth time mamas go through this and 
literally still feel like they're hitting their head on the wall and trying to get some answers and no one's giving them. Uh, the thing that attracted me about Anya was their educational angle, which was um, not just you Googling at 2 a.m. and coming up with all your search result basically resulting in 600 uh, articles that just popped up all contradicting each other. But this was a one-stop shop for verified information, verified by doctors, uh, OBGYNs, Ayurvedic specialists, um, acupuncturists, pelvic floor therapists, all of them, all of the various pieces of the village that come together in helping nurture the mother and helping her get back on her feet in a way that she feels like she's equipped and ready to take on this brand new, most important role of her life, the most challenging, most warrior-like role of her life. So I think that's what attracted me. And of course, we have on the product side of things, beautiful supplements that that uh, uh, support you in every part of your journey month by month, the first year postpartum. And so the product side of it is beautiful, wonderful, created by um, um, experts. So it's not something that you can just find on any shelf at any grocery store. Um, and, and, and the educational side supports you in actually getting, getting you, just helping you put your mind at ease. There are answers to everything out there and you just have to know exactly where you're looking for it. Yeah, I I absolutely love that. And I love what you said about uh, how isolating motherhood can be here. Um, you know, I grew up in Bangladesh and I always just thought it was so strange. You know, we have so many issues back home, uh, mm -hmm. but a new mother is never isolated no. and left on her own the way they are here. It's it's so, um, yes, yeah, so um, backward for a developed nation. Um, you said in an interview, also in Vogue, uh, and I love this so much. It's so important. You said that postpartum is forever. You were talking about how we're, you know, this attitude of how we're supposed to bounce back uh, mm -hmm. after pregnancy in America. It's a real thing. I feel like just in the maybe last 10 years, women are starting to say, I can't do this. What the heck? And all of us kind of sharing our stories. But explain to me more about what you mean when you say postpartum is forever, because that is so important. Yes, I I will absolutely explain that. And I feel like I'm not, I'm when I say that, I'm not saying it from the point of view of being metaphorical or saying something that isn't actually true or not factual. This is scientifically a fact that once you have um, prepared, your body has prepared itself for something as transformative and has shifted in every which way, you know, your uterus has expanded, your abdominal wall has separated to make room, your hormones have gone through all kinds of, the, 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 the thing that I learned that was like so uh, eye-opening is that there is no other time in uh, a human's life and specifically a woman's life where there is such a wild and um, a massive surge of hormones and an equal drop and plummeting of hormones. It is the most wild, most extreme time in the hormonal life. <laughs> you know, um, you go through it in puberty, but it's not as intense. You go again, go through it in menopause. Again, it's not as intense. This is intense. And why is it intense? It's intense because you're actually with creating another human being. And that is no mean feat. That is no mean feat. That that little human being in your body and then also outside of your body is so dependent on you for everything from nurture to comfort to um, growth to um, peace, you know, and all of that is very draining. And and how can you expect your body to bounce back or be put together in six weeks or three months or one year. I'm, I'm sorry, that just does not happen. Scientifically, it has fully changed and transformed. This is why for you hear about certain women saying three or four years later, they're still trying to regain strength in the pelvic floor. There are women who are still trying to figure out how their abdominal wall muscles find its strength and come back together. And guess what? Sometimes they never do. It's always going to be that happy little gap. And it is your 
beautiful, um, um, I don't even want to call it a war wound because it's not a war, you know, I mean, it does feel like a war down there, but, <laughs> but, but it's not really a war wound as much as it's like your, 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 it is actually a mother wound and it is actually a sign of you being able to do something that no one else can, you know? So I, I do, I do feel like it continues transforming itself because, um, you're always going to feel the lack of the sleep deprivation and the lack of sleep. It's always going to have its effects, not only in the, in real time, but in months to come. And how does that just, you know, how do you just heal from that in a, in a few months or a year? That takes a long, long, long time. And by the time you think maybe it's healing or maybe it's coming back together, you hit menopause. And yeah. for me, menopause is another later form of postpartum. You know, whether, yes. whether like a much, much later form, because there, there are impacts of what you go through in postpartum, your postpartum period yes. that will have, that will show its effects on menopause as perimenopause and menopause itself. How you yes. took care of your, your, yourself in your postpartum period, 100% has its effects on how it shows itself up in, in your menopausal days. Yes. So in that sense, I mean, it is forever. And um, that's why I say it, there's literally nothing more uh, life altering, um, like, you know, like the role of taking on, um, the motherhood role. Yeah. It's, it's just mostly, mostly <laughs> ebbs and flows that you will always just have to find ways to cope with. Yeah. And I love that. Um, I, lo I love that you say that because a lot of people, you know, there's so many funny memes. That's like the dad on the couch in the hospital being like, this sofa is so uncomfortable. And the woman is just like, well, I just squeezed out this thing from my vagina or <laughs> people will be like, I, you know, women literally created like eyeballs and entire, you know, life systems to go with this child. And it's just kind of like blase. I feel like it would be a national holiday um, for mm -hmm. men. <laughs> Um, but also I love, I feel like our work and our advocacy overlap in, in so many ways. Um, but I love, um, I love when you speak about how it's so much easier to identify and kind of speak about the physical aspects of giving birth, uh, the physical aspects of postpartum, but how mm -hmm. the emotional kind of scars or um, impact is so much more difficult to, to speak about because they're invisible and women, it's difficult for women to be believed about their health, mm -hmm. their bodies. So um, talk to me about that because you you have been so courageous and open with your own postpartum story. When was it? Because I understand that you brought you know your mother was here with you from India. You were kind of yes. taking care of all the physical stuff as much as you could to keep yourself nourished. You know we have so many ancient beautiful traditions in our culture. Um, when was it for you where you were like? This is so difficult and I have to use my platform. So other women need to know about this. When was that kind of that moment for you? Yeah, no, I was, I, you know, I was always committed to it even before Rumi was born because I uh, had my own personal experience with a previous miscarriage, which uh, actually was the first highlight into what postpartum might be feel like and be like and we can get into that conversation another time but you know a lot of us are not prepared for um um the the drop in hormones post post a miscarriage which is very intense and uh it is a different kind of putting yourself back together you know and it is also very emotional and uh there is yes lots of conversations around it but each individual's experience is so uniquely theirs um and if you don't have the right person to to a right person or or I would say rather a right um, not even just person like the the right means to kind of dis help dissipate some some of those deep 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 emotional traumatic experiences and the the stresses that you feel from it then you can actually carry it on into the next experience and which I partly did you know. Um, there was shame, there was some self-blaming, there was lots and lots of fear. And I only imagined what this would feel like if I actually had carried this baby to term, had this baby, and then was in a very, very different, confusing <laughs> time of my life, which I've never, I've never done being a mother before. So this is brand new. And I 
could only imagine the impact of the hormones at that point would be so much, so much stronger um, than what I experienced uh, during my miscarriage. And by the way, I will never, never undermine what the experience of coming out of a miscarriage um, is like for myself or for any other women, because it's so hard. It's so hard and there's so much work to be done in that. So anyway, coming back to your question, I had already made up my mind that it was something that I was going to be super focused on instead of focusing on just uh, preparing the nursery and preparing for the this newborn. Um, because if the mother is happy, I knew the baby would be cared for. If the, the family feels um, at peace, then the little child is automatically brought into a very, very safe environment. Um, and so somewhere around, um, you know, month six or seven, when Anya came to the picture, I knew that I had to use my platform and talk about it as much as possible in real time. But that was a great plan that did not happen because when real time came along, <laughs> I was like, where is the time to sleep, let alone write down my experiences? And, and you know, Jane and Ari was so understanding. And actually, they, had, they, they were very um, um, supportive of my ambition. But Jane, who's a mother of two, literally had this conversation with her partner saying, we'll see if she'll actually be able to do this. And I'm actually glad that they gave me my space because I needed my first three months to experience everything and come from a real space of sitting with everything that was happening, as opposed to just, just, you know, just uh, literally just talking about things without actually having fully experienced it. Then it was around the fourth month where I had the most beautiful postpartum three months, first three months, because I had my mother with me and I had all my Ayurvedic um, um, supplements and uh, methi laddus and I and my husband's support. And I think, and, and a great postpartum doula as well. All of which, by the way, when I say this, I will say it out loud. I am not unaware of my privilege to have all of this. This is something this country really falls short on, where your insurance doesn't co cover something as simple as, first of all, you don't get proper paid leave. Secondly, your insurance doesn't cover so much, like the acupuncture and the pelvic floor therapy and that you should be having, or the physical therapy that you know a lot of physical therapists find so hard to go under the insurance system because it's so, so mentally and draining for them to even convince them why you you can't just have 10 minutes with your with your client you need to have more time but it only pays for the shortest amount of time which is not enough when a physical a therapist or a pelvic floor therapist invests in a postpartum mother it's not for 10 minutes it cannot be for 10 minutes and and it's just such a man, such a missed opportunity i really really do think because we can have so many more we can have so much actually so much more being contributed to the economy if we just had a healthier mother yeah. but no one puts yeah. two and two together right like they we're all just thinking about the real time now and now money but no one's really thinking about the long term yeah anyway yeah, i can exactly. go on and on about it and and it, it's, it's my a, it favorite topic. topic no so please <laughs> i will never i will never interrupt someone talking about this and then you look at america's maternal mortality crisis maternal health crisis and you wonder where is where is this coming from why is this happening but it's such a combination of factors you know from race yeah. to not having any paid leave to i don't think people outside of america understand how messed up our insurance system is we'd oh, rather completely. have you like die on the street if you if you mm -hmm. have no coverage and if you can't pay i mean uh, that's kind of the end of it people don't believe yeah. it but here we are no, um, exactly. Here we are, and 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 that's what I meant. So it's it's so a, unfair. But it's I the equity. I'm, yeah, I'm completely aware of my privilege. I'm completely yeah. aware that I could pay for a postpartum doula for that uh, amount of time, and you know, I, I didn't have to really worry about getting back to work, and hence have to worry yeah. about daycare and whatnot. You know, I had my I had the privilege of having my mother for me from India, mm -hmm. who came with her own wisdom of the ancient culture of um. Of, well, back in, in there's different terms for it everywhere the sitting period or the mm -hmm. you know the um what is it called uh it almost it almost sounds like you're in jail but it's a great jail to be in <laughs> the, 40 Prison, the 40 day jail the resting the period it's your recovery yeah, it's um, resting period. yeah. Um, but yes um all in all to say it was around the fourth month that i actually really started experiencing um 
the effects of postpartum and it came in really hard and really rough because I think I least expected it. The first mm. three months I was so cocooned. Uh, and then my mother had and and father flew back to India and I was mm. flying back to Los Angeles to get back into work. Just dip my toe, just dip my mm. toe. But even just dipping my toe was awfully scary mm -hmm. and awfully isolating. And I felt like I did not have the right kind of support to do that very important part of my life as well, which is the work part is really important, but I really didn't feel like I had the support. Um, so it, it really was a downward spiral for me after having such an amazing start, which mm -hmm. also then made me realize no one, whether you have privilege or no privilege, no one is immune to the effects of postpartum. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to cry. Um, thank you so much for sharing that for, and for being so, for being so open. Um, but I also, oh, gosh, I lost my, I lost my train of thought. Cause I just wanted to reach out and give you a hug. The oh. other thing is, is that it shouldn't be a privilege, right? You're recognizing all your privilege, but should these things be a privilege? It should be, you know, accessible and, you know, every mother's right, every woman's right, especially postpartum. Uh, my last question I really wanted to ask you because um, I, I feel like a lot of times men will ask, well, what, you know, what is the role of men and, you know, male mm, allyship? And, um, you know, my husband played such an important role <laughs> in my postpartum yes. journey, in my in my birth trauma. And now even today, um, as my witness, I feel like he was my most mm -hmm. important witness. Um, I want to I want to talk to you about your husband and your partner, because I remember when we first spoke, you were kind of telling a story about how he was advocating for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And just just all along the way. So talk to us about the importance of a really strong partner, man, woman, whoever, but having that support and uh, what does it mean yeah. to you and it plays a big impact on women's health mental health completely I, I think it is one of the most important things who as you know right from um childbirth to the postpartum period whoever you identify in your life as your support system your partner it's so important to have some kind of um, being in sync with that person, where that person does not need to be constantly explained to what's going on. And, you know, some, some, some level of education is important, uh, especially if that person is not experiencing or hasn't experienced what you are physically going through as well. Uh, but on another level, there almost has to be like this trust and understanding that, and this, and this instinctual feeling that if something is not right, I speak up for this person in the situation. I support this person in the situation. I, um, I help them l get their voice heard, you know? And so that's how I really felt about Corey. Uh, what I was sharing with you a while back was that when I had, I had luckily a very beautiful birth experience minus one or two things that did not go according to plan. And I was prepared to go into my birth, knowing that I had an intention and a plan put in place. I was going in with going with the flow, you know, whatever happens, happens. But nothing terrible actually did happen other than the my my doctor not being able to honor the one or two things that I did write down saying that this is what I want to do. And it really heartened me to see my postpartum doula and Corey say, no, this is, she does not want to be on her back to give birth. She has been laboring on her hands and knees and she feels less pain and more comfortable on her hands and knees. And, and, um, at that point, you know, the OB did what the OB thought was best. And I think just seeing Corey and, uh, my postpartum doula, doula support Jillian, just, just seeing both of them support me, just gave me the sense of peace and calm to choose the path of least resistance right now with the authority in front of me. And I literally let go and I told everyone to be calm. Like I've, I just, I see your support. I, I am, am completely uplifted and empowered by it. And I can do the rest of this without, without going into a fight, you know, and, and it just allowed for Rumi's birth to be peaceful. But sometimes you actually just want to see it, even if it does not necessar necessarily result into what you want it to be. Sometimes just seeing that support gives you that peace of calm, a sense of calm and that sense of peace. 
and that's how I felt. It it just it made me emotional and 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 settled my overwhelm. And um and I think, you know, the rest of it through the postpartum journey was very normal and both ups and downs where there were certain parts where Corey needed to be educated on what I was experiencing. He needed to read some stuff. He needed to be told that this experience is is longer for so and so reason and it's not what you've constantly read. I mean, he innocently asked me and he really was so innocent about it. He didn't mean it in any malicious way. He goes, I don't understand. It's been six months. How are you still experiencing and feeling these things? You know, and he goes, I read, I read. That's what he said, quote unquote. I read that it usually doesn't last this long. I said, Who? Where did you read that? <laughs> we, Name we, your source. <laughs> exactly. We need to call that source out and uh, quite frankly, educate them. Or if they don't want to be educated, don't just tell them they can't put out damaging material out this out, out there like this. They need to be called out for it. Um, but but yes, like I said, like the the, the partnership and whoever you choose as your as your partner, you need to be able to feel that um, sense of openness with them to tell them when something is not right. And you need it also, as someone who's experiencing it, have the fortitude and this, the courage within yourself to sometimes know that they are not always going to understand. So be patient and and find in that moment of that, that partner or that's a source of support is not giving you what you need. It's okay. Find someone else. It's okay. <laughs> We need, oh my goodness, that might be the title of my next book or tattoo. Um, that is excellent. <laughs> what a great place to to end our conversation. Thank you so much, Frida. It's okay. Thank find someone so else. Don't bash your partner's head in. We are, no, no, we are all go find someone else and just and just give them the grace. Just give yes. them some grace in that moment that they are also trying. It's not easy for them. It's not easy They're for anybody. Trying, but at yes. this moment. This is not the person. It's yes, okay. this is not the person. Exactly, exactly. And this is why a community like Anya is so important because I feel yes. like whatever you say about online this and that, so many, especially in the last three years of this pandemic, we found how much mm-hmm. support we can actually get from our online community and connections. And I thank you so much, Frida. And my heart just goes out to you. Thank you for using your platform. Thank you for making your story so accessible. Um, it's so important. It's so important that people with with your voice um, share these stories because too often women, too often and still, women just feel like they're alone, right? We feel like yes. we're alone. It's only happening to yes. us. And mm-hmm. the power of women's stories is never underestimate, never underestimate yeah. those stories. I fully agree. Um, Thank and I also want so to thank you for being oh. so vulnerable and sharing your experience. I, when I read the, when I read, and I told you, this is like, it, I read the article way before I even met you. So when I, wow. when I heard about your book and, and, um, finally spoke to you over zoom, I was, I was so excited for a couple of different reasons. Mm-hmm. One is because I see you and honor you for your openness and vulnerability and I also see you and honor you for your anger. Mm. It is yes. both equally mm. important. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? I encourage all women, okay? Don't underestimate the power of women's anger, our story and our anger. We have, there's political power behind that, that anger. So I, I encourage everyone to tap into it. And thank you for showing us the path, Rita. Thank you so much. I will speak to you soon. And yes, thank you for spilling the tea with us. Yes. Absolutely. So much love, Frida. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.